In today's video, we're gonna show you how to install a dine-in front mount heat exchanger in a BMW F80 M3. Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. Today, in-house, we have an F80 M3 and we're doing a pure stage two turbo build with some other goodies, which we'll show you in just one second. And as a part of the project, we're going to be installing this dine-in front mount heat exchanger. Now, we currently have a video on how to install a CSF front mount heat exchanger, which is a very similar process, but we thought, hey, let's make one for dine-in. All right, so here's a little peek what this race car is getting. Check out these turbos. So as you can see, this project has everything to improve flow, cooling, and also styling. We have intakes, we have carbon fiber extensions, we have a mid pipe, and more. And as you'd imagine, we're gonna finish it off with a boot mode tune. All right, the first part of the process is to remove the front bumper. Now, we do have a dedicated video on this. If you'd like a little bit more detail, it's located up here, but we're gonna cover all the steps in this video. All right, to take off the bumper, what you need to do is get this weather stripping, just gently lift up, and set that out of the way, and then you're going to see two T25s. There's a T25 over here, and then there is another one over here, followed by six of these T30s. So at this time, remove them all. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the car up in the air and we're going to release all of those eight millimeter screws and plastic fasteners from the bottom portion of the bumper. Now, something that you'll notice is that we are using a lift. Now, for this project, you absolutely do not need a lift. If you have a jack and some jack stands, that will do just fine. Next, what we need to do is we need to remove this eight millimeter, this one, there's one up here, and then there are two that hold the bumper to the fender. They sit right up here. So once we get these out, we can pull back the fender liner, extract those, and then do the same on the other side. All right, so once you remove those three eight millimeters, again, you pull this in, and I put a little white dot on the screws we need to release so you can see where they are. And again, they just hold the bumper to the fender. Now, once you've released all those screws, do the exact same thing on the other side. Now, this car that we're working on has PDC and also headlight washers, so we need to first remove the PDC connection, which is right here. You press on both sides and you pull it out. Again, the tabs look like that and like that. You press and press and pull it out. Now, I did loosen this. When you first pull it out, it's pretty tight, just to give you a little heads up. Now what we need to do is we need to disconnect the lines for the headlight washer. So to do so, what you want to do is just gently pull this down, pull this out ever so slightly, and this is going to give us a little room to get in here. So now that I can get my hand in here, what you want to do is you want to pull up on this and then it's going to detach. So be careful because you are going to lose a little bit of windshield washer fluid. Now once you've done that, you can just disconnect it from down there. I'm just going to put it over here for a second to stop the dripping. I'm going to put a brand new microfiber towel on the fender and then just zip tie it up here. Alright, so as you can see we just have that zip tied so it's not leaking all over the place. Now once you've done that, what we're going to do is we are going to very carefully release the one side of the bumper. Now the other side is already released. Okay, so just make sure that that's out. Then you can very carefully slide this out like that. And then this is gonna come straight out. Just make sure you have a spot lined up for where it's gonna go. At this part of the process, we are going to remove the crash bar. It is held in by four 13 millimeter bolts. So as you can see, there are two right here under this headlight two under the other side, and even just a little small ratchet like this will do. They aren't torqued in very tight, so they're typically pretty easy to get out. All right, so then once you have them loose, you wanna just pull them out the top. Now this one is a little trickier than the other one, but they still come out without having to remove the headlights. Okay. 
All right, once you've released the screws, you want to lift up in the middle here so it doesn't get hung up. Just very carefully pull your crash bar off. Next up, what we need to do is we need to remove this shroud. I like to start at the top. It literally just presses in. You just very carefully pop it out of the tabs. Okay, same thing over here. Just very carefully detach it from the plastic and it'll pull off just like that. Now the next part of the process is we need to remove this front support bar right here. This is secured by six of these T45. So there's two over here. As you'd imagine, there's two on this other side. And then there's one right here and one right here. So what I typically like to do is I like to just use a hand ratchet, break them loose, and then I'll attach the bit to my impact driver just to speed things up a little bit. Now what we need to do is we need to gently lower this down so we can get the heat exchanger out. So one thing that we like to do is if you take a piece of cardboard and just slide it up, it just helps make sure that nothing is going to hit your original heat exchanger. Same thing when you're putting it back in. If you just put that little barrier, it's just gonna help protect everything. So there you have it, it's out. At this point, we're almost ready to get the old heat exchanger out and get the new one in. But before we do that, we need to drain the coolant so we don't have a puddle on the floor. So here's how you do it. Step one is we need to clean off the cap whenever you're removing any cap. You wanna clean it off, make sure that there's no junk in there. I'm going to loosen this. And then so no, no stuff falls in or anything, I'm just gonna put it on just like that. But this way, air can get in here as we're draining from the bottom. Next, to drain the coolant, we need to remove more of these eight millimeter screws here. And then we're going to be able to take off the under plastic and then get to where we need to get to. And last but not least, once all of the eight mils are out, there are two T40s. There's one on this side. And then there's one over here. You can just lower all this down. Now the next part's going to be very tricky to show, so I'm just gonna show you what I'm gonna do. Basically, you take this little clip right here and you pull it down just like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wiggle that hose off after I disconnect this connection right here, which to do so, all you need to do is pull down on this little tab and then press in and then that'll pull down. Um, I'm going to put a rubber glove over there to protect that. But what we're going to do is I'm going to disconnect that hose and all the coolant is going to drain out and for the sake of my camera, we're gonna put the camera in a safe dry location. So to get this off, the hardest part is getting your hand up there. You just wiggle it and then it'll all drain out. Next, what you can do is you can remove this piece of trim and the one on the other side. The way that this works is you lift it up and you pull it out and then under the light here, basically what you need to do is you need to push this out of the way so that you can pry up here and then this whole piece will come out. Okay. So this is what it looks like. This is the piece you're prying up on. Be very careful. These are very fragile, and there you have it. Once you've done this side, do the same on the other. <clears throat> okay, there's number two. Now for this shroud, you can either remove it or you can leave it on. We're gonna leave it on, it doesn't really get in the way. There's still plenty of room to safely get the old heat exchanger out and the new one in, so. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to remove the coolant line, so same thing as before. Take like a pick tool or a flathead screwdriver. You're going to release the clip and then have your coolant pan ready because you may get a little coolant leakage, which is perfectly normal. Now for this next part, what we're going to do is we are going to release this coolant line and the one down here. So same thing as before, get your pick tool, pull down on that little metal retaining clip. Make sure you have a coolant container underneath and ready to go because you're probably going to lose a little bit of coolant and then just very carefully pull your coolant line off. There's one, and we'll do the same with the other one. Again, just get your pick tool in here. Okay, once again, it might have a little bit of coolant in it, so don't be surprised if it does. All right, there we go. 
Then what we're going to do is we're going to get our piece of cardboard from earlier. We're going to carefully slide it up behind here. This is just to make sure that when we remove this one that it's not going to accidentally hit what's behind it. Now what you want to do is you want to press it towards the driver's side and then you carefully pull it out. It's kind of weird the way that they have this set up, but it's the only real way to get it out and make sure that nothing is damaged while you're doing it. Then what you want to do is take a flathead screwdriver and there's a little retaining clip up here. You go like that and you take it and you just very carefully pull it out just like that. The next part of the process is we need to shave down this piece right here and this piece right here and we need to make it flat with this. Now could you get away without doing this? Probably, but doing the small details like this is what's going to make it turn out perfect. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use a very small Dremel with a piece of sandpaper on there and let's grind these flat. So as you can see, this one has a little bit of a lip and this one is ground down nice and flat. So let's do the exact same thing on the other side. All right, now it is time to assemble all of the brackets. Now all four brackets will look like this. And basically what you do is you take this little rubber grommet that says dining on it. And you're going to squeeze it into this little hole here. Now I found that doing this with a little flathead screwdriver really works best. Okay. Then what you want to do once you have it like this is you take this little piece of metal and that goes from the outside in. You're going to have one of these little wave washers. You put a wave washer on the bolt that's provided and then you thread it into the heat exchanger. Now there's a very specific way that each one of these has to go, so here's a look at what that looks like. Now what's different about the dining is it's going to get mounted to the support brace, but when we go to install it, you will notice that the top two bolts go in, but the bottom ones don't. So what we need to do is we need to drill out this hole and this one over here to eight millimeters. All right, now what you can do is put the bolts through all of the holes. Okay, just like that. And what you can do is put a washer on each one. And then lock it down with the locking nut provided. And then go back and tighten all of these to the heat exchanger. Next what we're going to do is we are going to use those O-rings that are provided by Dynan. We are going to replace the ones that are in here now. So with your pick tool, just carefully pull the old ones out and take the new ones and put them into place. Here we go. Now when you're navigating these in, I recommend using a flathead screwdriver, just be very careful. I don't like using a pick tool to put them back in because I don't want to accidentally tear it or puncture it. Make sure that it sits completely in that little groove, nice and flat, just like this, and do the exact same thing on the other one. All right, so what we're going to do now is we are going to remove these protective caps. You can see that I have my cardboard in place. We're going to just gently pull this back, push this up through here. And then we're going to take the top, we're going to push it through, okay, just like that. Now this might be too tricky to show, but when you're positioning this in the place, you want to get that bolt right there behind that little piece of plastic, and then everything will sit really nice. All right, good. So now we are roughly in place. What I like to do at this point is I like to connect my coolant lines. So to do this, lift up, make sure that this little metal clip is engaged and then you will hear it audibly click into place. Okay, so if you hear that click, you know you're good. Now for the bottom one, we're going to take care of it now because if you tighten this down, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to get your hand back there and once again, press that little clip down. 
pop that up here. Once you hear that audible click, you're good to go. And at this time, it's safe to remove my piece of cardboard here. Then what we can do is we can take two bolts. We'll put one of our bolts over here. And we'll do the other one over here. Then what we're gonna do is on the bottom, it has these little metal spacers. These go right behind here to just press the bottom out ever so slightly. So get that lined up and then you can secure these bolts. All right, now something very important that I forgot to mention, so don't do this because I just did it, even though I've done this before. Um, this little plastic piece needs to go behind the support brace. Um, make sure that you, you put that in before you actually um, put this in because if you have to take this back out, it's kind of a pain. So make sure that you do that. Once you've done that, what you want to do is put all of these T45 bolts back in and you want to torque them down. Now I am in the middle of a pure stage two turbo build. So I am not really putting everything 100% back together. But what I'm going to do for you is I'm going to put all of the torque specs down in the description below. Once you finish torquing everything down, what you want to do is you want to fill your radiator. So there's a little screw up here at the top right. Again, I'm not ready for that yet because we need to make sure that all of the coolant is out of the car. You want to fill this until it starts to overflow. At that time, you can stop. Once you finish filling your front mount heat exchanger with a 50-50 blend of BMW coolant and also distilled water, what you want to do is top off the reservoir. Once you've topped off the reservoir, you want to follow the BMW protocol to bleed your coolant system. We have all the details down in the description. Now, if you're looking for a video on it, we have more details in the CSF video, which you can click right above. Then once you've done all of that, you can follow all the steps we went through earlier in the reverse order to put your bumper back on and make sure everything is tightened up. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com for all of your BMW retrofit, performance, and aesthetic needs. Everything from carbon fiber to pure turbos, dining front mount heat exchangers, and more. Once again, my name is Brian. Thanks for watching and have a great day.